Hey everyone, we are going to be looking at the upcoming potential for another tornado outbreak to happen in the southeast around Wednesday. Before we could get into the forecast, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new and turn on post notifications so you won't miss a single upload or live stream on the channel. Now before we get into this, I'm going to put some pictures up on the screen of the tornadoes yesterday that we were covering. Um, we did get some reports of damage uh, and for some homes and we also got some reports of injuries. So I will put some of those damage and those tornado pictures up on screen. Right now we're looking at the day three severe thunderstorm outlook. And this is for Tuesday. We already have a slight risk for severe storms across Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, and Kansas. As you can see in that yellow color. We also do have a marginal risk around that. Also in Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Missouri. We don't have the separate tornado risks, wind risks, and hail risk out yet. But this is the general risk. This is the probabilistic risk and as you can see we have a 15 percent chance for all hazards right now um i wouldn't be surprised if there's a five percent risk for tornadoes in this region on tuesday um just because there is enough ingredients there for tornadoes um but definitely not a high risk uh for uh tornadoes there um it's definitely not going to be anything above a 10 percent chance uh for tornadoes but as we head if we look at day four, which is Wednesday, as you can see, we already have a 30% chance for severe storms across the Mississippi and Alabama, Louisiana, Arkansas, even a little bit of Tennessee there, and also a 15% chance around that in the yellow. If we read the uh, Storm Prediction Center discussion, uh, we can see medium range models have come into somewhat better agreement with respect to synoptic features throughout the early half of the period through smaller scale differences persist. Still confidence has increased that a fairly widespread severe weather event will occur day four Wednesday across the lower Mississippi Valley slash central Gulf Coast region and northward into at least parts of tennessee valley and then continuing into day five which is thursday east of the appalachians in the wake of this severe weather episode high pressure and stable air should spread across the u.s east of the rockies yielding at least a couple of days of quieter weather respect to convective potential now if you also look at this paragraph right here um, a rather large 15% chance area will be maintained representative of an all hazards severe risk quarters of greater risk including possibly more concentrated tornado potential may evolve during the afternoon possibly near the northward moving warmth front so this is going to be a definitely a big tornado threat that's going to be um, in this area for Wednesday I'm definitely going to have a live stream on this so stay tuned for that and if as we look at day five we also already have that 15 percent chance for severe storms across more of the southeastern region that's including tallahassee that's including charlotte uh charleston is in there so the some of these big cities are going to be in this severe risk and also uh from day four we have birmingham in there we have some pretty big cities uh that are going to be in this a uh, 30 percent chance Nashville is also going to be in that 15 percent chance. Little Rock, New Orleans uh, is going to be in that. Uh, these storms are also going to hit Atlanta, Georgia. So there's going to be some definitely major populated cities that's going to be in this severe risk. Let's go ahead and move over to the models. Now, as we look at the surface-based Kate values, which is in the which is the energy within the upper atmosphere, let's go ahead and move forward here to Wednesday. This is Monday right now. As you can see, we may have a severe risk for a Monday uh, around that region. So they do have a marginal risk for around that area. So nothing too special there. We get to Tuesday, and as you can see, there's definitely some energy uh, within there to trigger those storms. Now, as we move into Wednesday, this is going to be around 9 p.m. of Tuesday. But now we're at 12 a.m. Wednesday, and as you can see, there's definitely some energy over here. You're seeing around 1,700 joules per kilogram. This is in Texas. This is going to move eastward as the day goes on. You're getting to around 6 a.m. 
Now that energy is over here in mainly Louisiana. You're getting close to 2,000 joules per kilogram now. Now it looks like these storms are going to fire between 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. most likely. And you're definitely seeing that peak of energy. You're seeing upwards of uh, 2,000, 2,500 joules per kilogram. So you're definitely seeing a very decent amount of energy. The hail threat is definitely not going to be that big of a threat here uh, so far anyways. You get to 9 p.m. and that energy really starts to dissipate. But as you head into around 12 p.m. Thursday, that energy starts to kick back up again. And you're getting around 1,500 joules per kilogram once again for those storms moving across the east coast. Now as we look at our cap values, the more cap you have, the harder it is for storms to really develop. So as we move forward here to around Wednesday here, um, we get to around 6 a.m. There's definitely a very nice amount of cap over the region uh, by 6 a.m. However, you get to 9 a.m. already and that cap is way moved out of the area. You are seeing only around pockets of negative 24 joules per kilogram. So you're not seeing any cap at all. And you get to when these storms are going to start firing. You're seeing no cap. Absolutely no cap at all. So this is why the SBC has already issued these. Because the certainty is definitely pretty decent uh, with this system. As you move into 3 p.m. And there's still absolutely barely any cap here. So these storms are going to be very healthy moving eastward. They're definitely going to be pretty long track. Now as you move into the overnight hours at 6 p.m. You're now seeing a bit of cap here. You're only seeing around 30 to 40 still. So it's not going to be a very capped event. It looks to be and moves into some cap by around once it gets to eastern Alabama. You get to 12 a.m. now and still that cap is really not that much. You're now getting into on, only around negative 15 for Eastern Alabama. And mainly this is not going to be a very capped event at all, which is very worrying for the southeast here because we definitely could see some strong uh, tornadoes in here. Let's go ahead and look at the bulk shear, uh, which we tell if, if we do have a very nice amount of shear. Um, we definitely could see some tornadoes within here. So let's go ahead and go to Wednesday here. And when these storms develop, this is going to be around 9 a.m. You're already seeing a bunch of shear all the, over the region. You're seeing 60 knots up to 70 knots in places. When these storms start to, to develop, you are still seeing around 50 knots in here. Um, even eight, up to 80 knots over here in northern Alabama. Now these storms fire around 3 p.m. And you are still seeing a lot of shear over the region. You're seeing around 57 to 60 knots. That can definitely cause some pretty strong tornadoes. As you move forward to around 6 p.m., still a bunch of shear over the region. And this is not weakening at all. And this shear increases once you go into the overnight hours. Once these storms move eastward, as you can see, they will be around that type of area by then. There's still enough shear for tornadoes, as you can see right over here. We're still seeing around 50 knots or so. So the tornado threat is definitely going to go overnight. As we look at supercell composite, and this is the risk for supercells developing. Now, as we head into Wednesday, now you are seeing up to 12 here. So you're seeing a, this is around the mid range, it looks like. So you're getting to around uh, between 10 and 16 in there. Um, you're getting now to around, around 6 p.m. So you're still seeing around 11. So those are definitely going to be. We're definitely going to see a, a super cellular event here happening definitely Wednesday afternoon. Definitely stay tuned for the live stream on this. We do not have all the details on this right now. Once we get to Monday and Tuesday, we're going to have much more details on this. It's going to be much more close range. Uh, right now, it's pretty long range for severe weather. So we're going to see a lot of updates with this. But it's already looking like a pretty major event. A very widespread event for sure. So you're seeing still 13 here. Uh, significant tornado parameter. And as you can see here, we're seeing some major parameters here. Um, especially over here near Arkansas, Louisiana. That's going to be at 9 a.m. So we're already seeing significant tornado parameters by 9 a.m. 
Um, and as you can see, we're seeing threes in there. So that's also about mid-range. We can definitely see some pretty strong tornadoes, even significant tornadoes in here. Um, as you move forward throughout the night, you get to 9 p.m. and there's still definitely some significant tornado parameters by 9 p.m. there. We're now moving through here by 12 a.m. There's still some there, but the significant tornado risk has definitely decreased by 12 a.m. there. Now, it looks to be storms may fire uh, right at 9 a.m. Uh, right in Louisiana, as you can see, we're already seeing cells by then. Um, and that's why we have that significant tornado parameter pretty high in this region. So by 9 a.m., we might even see... Uh, some significant tornadoes uh, and this is very early here already by I mean by 9 a.m. A lot of people are just uh, Waking up here And as you can see we're already seeing cell development So a lot of these are gonna be very dangerous on this day and as you see more cells firing up by around 6 or 9 p.m. there once those cells move into around Mississippi and Alabama and then they'll start to move through as a l linear event uh, once you get to uh, just south of Birmingham there and we can't go any farther than that so if you did enjoy the video and want more updates on this be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new and turn our post notifications for more detailed severe weather forecasts like this one but anyways, stay safe.